Hello chess lovers, welcome to the new video. So this is uh, an introduction to the upcoming World Championship match. As you can see, I got a new board, uh, new colors, new set of pieces and the same guy. Yeah, so I thought to make a little change uh, for this a show that is about to begin. So while we, while I uh, talk a little bit about the upcoming match, you can entertain yourself with this uh, position. Um, it's from a game that was played um, maybe 100 years ago or something like that and it's white to move and think what would you play? All right, so we are going to have a treat, we, the chess lovers, because, <coughs> apologies, the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniusz is going to start in just two days. Yeah, on Friday. It starts on Friday. Um, the basic propositions are there will be 14 games, unless uh, the match is decided before that, so 14 games are planned to be played and if the score is tied, then we proceed with the tie breaks. So, um, the world champion, well-known face, Magnus Carlsen, is defending his title against the challenger Jan Nepomniuszczyk. So, most people believe that Magnus is a huge favorite. Also, many people believe that he is just a favorite, not a huge favorite. And some people give Jan chances. I am one of those people. Alright, so in the end, whatever happens will happen. And then, those who predicted that score will say, You see, I told you! But actually, Nobody knows. Yeah, this is when it comes to predictions of sport events. Uh, when people guess correctly, then they brag. Look, I told you. But when they um, predict wrongly, they don't say anything. So there is always someone who is going to predict right and someone who is going to predict wrong. Uh, so we don't know what's going to happen. Of course, Magnus is the favorite, but. I wouldn't count out Jan Nepomniusz. Uh, one of the reasons is, of course, he's a good player, but one of the reasons is that he's not really afraid of Magnus. He's not afraid. They know each other for a long time. So they played when they were kids. Yeah, they were top juniors and they compete, competed for the junior. World Championship title. And in those matches, it was Jan who dominated. But of course, um, in the following years, uh, Carlson, Carlson um, improved rapidly and he came over the top, so he became a better player. But Jan knows how to beat Magnus. Uh, he has been doing that since they were kids. So, I would not be surprised um, if he wins this match. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. Um, at the moment, in classical games, um, so those are the games with long time controls, I think Jan is leading with the score of four victories to one um, defeat and many, many draws. But two of those victories came when they were children. So, we can say it's 2-1. Since they are grown-ups, the score is 2-1 for Jan. I know, you might be su surprised that Jan is leading uh, in this category. But the thing is, uh, they didn't play as much in the recent years, in these long games, um, in these years where Magnus is the dominant player. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what will happen. Anyway, um, I will be covering the games and I'm going to try to offer something new. And that is um, my own view on the games without 
the use of an engine. So I'm going to give you an amateur's um, description of what happened in each game. Hopefully, that's the plan. We'll see if I'm going to follow up with it. But I plan to do so. So let's go to this position. I hope you found something interesting here. I just want to tell you, when I saw this position, I was shocked. You know, I like tactics, I like to find those killer blows, but this seemed fantastic. So the first move is... Actually, I'm not going to tell you. Yet. So first, let's analyze. So we have two rooks, black has a queen. So, roughly level, and... If you try to slowly win this position with white, who knows? Is it possible? Is it not possible? I'm not sure. But there is a quick finish here. And it starts with this move. G4 check. Let's analyze. If the king uh, goes up, we have a quiet move. King h2 taking the g3 square, defending the pawn, and the threat is checkmate. Checkmate along the h file. Uh, the queen cannot uh, defend the h6 pawn, so black would have to try to escape that like this. But after rook h6, it doesn't matter that the rook is hang hanging, because this is the idea. If black takes the rook, white checkmates here. So, we can conclude that moving the king is not an option. But one might say, what if black captures on Poisson. What if he captures our pawn? Well then, my friends, the fourth rank opened and there is another shocker. Rook h4 check. What on earth is this? Look at this beauty. If you take this rook with a king, rook h6 six is checkmate. It's a checkmate because the pawn is preventing the king from running away. If you take this rook with a pawn, then you opened up the fifth rank, and after rook b5, you attack the queen, you attack the king, you're forcing a transition to a winning pawn endgame. After these moves, this pawn cannot be stopped because the king is too far away. So that's how white won the game after uh, g4, a beautiful sequence of moves followed. And white, I think it was, I'm sure it was Mises, Jacques Mises, um, a good player, not a legend, but he's often, his name is often mentioned in the books as the losing guy against Aliehin, against Capablanca, against the other great champions. But you see, he, he was also a very imaginative player. This is something special. I was really shocked when I saw this continuation. So this leads to checkmate and capturing leads to even more beautiful move. Rook h4, which leads either to checkmate or to a winning endgame. Beautiful stuff. Let's hope to see some fireworks uh, similar to this one in the upcoming World Championship match. Thank you for watching. See you!